all right so this is my canvas wig head block that i got from ebay it is a 22 inch circumference wig making mannequin and i actually have it on a stand that i've gotten also from ebay as well it's two tier and it just up to about five feet high it has a leveler and everything So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a wig on this wig head block using my favorite hair from Wild African. This is the Peruvian curl. They sent me a lot of stuff. This is the weaving set with the needles, the thread, the cap and the combs to make the wig with. And I have a 14 inch, a 12 inch, a 10 inch, and then an eight inch closure that I will not be using in this video and I also got a summer necklace but to me it will work just well for the fall it is such a beautiful color thank you so much okay so now I'm going to show you how I pin the wig cap that they provided for me onto my canvas block head and as you can see on the top of it it is very flat um, it works very well for those of you who like to hand sew your wigs. I think the wig head blocks are best for this, even though you can create your own from um, other mannequin heads like the foam head. And I do have a video on that, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to apply the cap onto the wig head block. So because this is going to be somewhat of a tapered wig, full wig, I want to start off with the... Um, 10 inch and I'm just kind of briefly showing you how I do my fold over method um, instead of cutting the tracks each time I just fold over and continue to sew yes at times I do go through the weft sometimes I don't but I go a couple of times in that area and then once I'm sure it's down and it's flat I'll go ahead and continue to sew and I also show you how I finish off if I'm at the end of my thread so there you go this is the 10 inch this is how far i have gotten and yes no cut tracks and when i start off with the first bundle i do tend to space them far away at the bottom and then as i go at the top the tracks will be much closer so next i start off with the 12 inch and this is how far i've gotten you can almost see the long tapered look to starting off with the shorter length this is how i finish the top edge off and then i'm gonna finish it off with the 14 inch and i'm going to go in a big circle at the top with them pretty close together So since I am not going to be using the closure, I'm going to show you exactly how I finish this off. I'm going to take about a finger length of the remaining hair and I'm going to cut at about my knuckle and I'm going to create a fold and I'm going to roll it into the center of the wig. So what I'm going to, you're going to see me do is take the needle and just kind of wrap around this fold so that I'm sure that it's secure. Now, once it's secure, I'm gonna take that fold and push it into the center of the wig, and then I'm gonna take the wig off, flip it over, and then I'm going to just, going to just make sure that that can be sewn to the inside of the cap so that it is even more secure. It won't lift up, uh, you can't pull it out. So this is how I close off wigs if I'm not using any type of circular closures or lace closures. All right, so now the closing of the wig is finished, looks professional. 
and you can actually see the slight tapered effect of the hair when you start off with the shortest bundle at the bottom and the longest at the top. So now I'm going to show you what is called a fold over method for some people, but I'm just going to take this leftover hair and I'm going to create fullness on the right side of the wig. So in this case, you're seeing it being done to the left side and I'm going to take track hair and yes, I'm going to have to cut it, but I'm using it to create extra fullness or height to one side of the wig and I'm going to show you how I do that. So what I'm going to do is part some hair over to one side, make sure I have enough hair measured for the spacing and then I'm going to flip it over and attach it to the already sewn track that is going downward. So I'm sewing one track upward and the other one I'm leaving it downward. Um, I hope that makes sense and I hope you can understand it from the visual here. So as you can see, once I pull all of the hair over to that one side, you can see the beautiful height that it gives me, especially for the cut I am thinking about doing. And here's just a quick view as to how I install my wigs. I use an elastic band for the back, which is extra. And now I put a comb in the front so that the wig doesn't slide back on me. Well, that's it guys. Stay tuned to see how I cut and style this wig and what color I am going to be coloring it. And I will see you guys in the next video.